Welcome, welcome everyone. Goddess of Radical Self-Love from Mecca. Make everyone count always. We are a support network for radical self-love and self-care. Focused attention on caregivers and care receivers, which we all are. However, our most vulnerable population, when they feel supported and valued, we can all rest assured that we as well will feel supported and valued. So we want to start with care receivers and those who care for them, caregivers. Yes. So it's our community attempt to support and show and add value to what they do each and every day, right? What they give to us as a community, as a society. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you one thing. Some people, for some reason, think, I don't know, those who are maybe vulnerable or who have dependency, physical or mental dependency needs are less valuable. However, they're the ones who hold the true magic. Yeah, they have superpowers. Mm -hmm. It's our balance. The universe has ways of balancing all our existence. So those who care for them know quite well of their magical powers and are gifted many treasures above and beyond this 3D world. Mm -hmm. It's quite amazing to be a caregiver, it sure is, and a care receiver. So to begin today, since it's Magic Monday or Mecca Manifestation Monday, right? We got to do our intentions for the week. Planners out. <laughs> you got your planner? You know your plan? Well, if not, get it ready. So for Mecca, for me, we are doing, yes, the snake that never sheds is going to be now sent out to different agents to find a publisher. So if any of you out there know of an agent who would like to assist me, please put me in contact. Our information is on the bottom so you can email us. Or you can always do goddess of radical self love at gmail.com as well. So, the agent, we're going, I'm working on finishing, well, I'm redoing the grid, um, not redoing, just updating with some of our specialties. So, in the grid, if you go to our website, you will see each column and then each one of those are gonna have specifics uh, for chakra healing, for crystals and for essential oils, just for now. I have a whole bunch more to do, but um, our product line. And, oh yes, I had a huge download, so Mecca's gonna change a bit. Like, we'll probably just have two different sites um yeah one for products and one for services goods services separated yeah that's going to be what's happening this week in mecca world mecca land mm -hmm. it's kind of like candy land but for long-term services and sports self-care radical self-love it's so fun yes so oh yes Thank you all so much for stopping by the site, yes. And for liking, sharing, commenting on the videos. And don't forget, if you want to get updated videos, all you have to do is hit the subscribe red bell. Mm -hmm. I do it all the time with all of my wonderful master teachers out there in YouTube land. Yes, I have quite a quite a few. Some I listen to every single day. And we're always really on track. It's very funny how it happens. Like, I just did walk and roll away Wednesday with anger. And then today, um, think of his name. I don't know why I'm having this. I'm going to just look at him quick. <laughs> I'm like, Believe me, I listen to him every day. So I, oh yeah, the hood mystic. I didn't even find it. 
So today he had his show on, of course, anger. Mm -hmm. And how it doesn't really serve anyone. So one, to, one of my friends, well, a few of my friends, um, but one in particular, yes, um, has asked me to help him to manifest wealth or at least get some, you know, income coming in. So what I want to say about that, first of all, is definitely have your intention each day. You can say out loud, first of all, never speak of lack. There is no lack. We live in a universe that is always giving and it is abundant. There is no lack. The only lack is in your mind. Yeah. <laughs> so every day, repeat. I receive gifts of income from all sources, known and unknown. Right? All the time. And be grateful. Definitely speak your gratitude. Mm -hmm. The universe does not want to, well, there's divine timing, but, you know, there's always like this precipice of, are you able to handle what we are gifting you? And if you've mismanaged in the past, will you mismanage again? So are you really ready for wealth and abundance that you speak or dream of, right? That's all in your mind still, just so you know. <laughs> it really is. So I got a little helper. Yes. Yes, I like my helpers. He spoke to me. He said, he's so cute, Froggy. Yeah, he's so cute. Mm -hmm. When um, the Kendra's Queen and I were crystal shopping, he picked up over the corner and he was like, take me home. Take me home. I want to be with you. Well, I didn't realize why this little froggy wanted to come with me so bad, but maybe it was just for today. So I'm going to put him right up here on my laptop. But I did look into my magic book. And no, I'm not telling you which one <laughs> because I'm like that. I will share with you almost every, I think all my books I have, I would share with you, but this one, so it's fine. So, yes, the animal magic well spell for the Chinese frog. Frogs are universally considered the creature epitomizing increase, generation, and multitude. The ancient Egyptians used hilogryp hype don't make fun of me. Hylogryphics for tadpole to represent the highest number they expressed. So you're supposed to place a money frog amulet, which is froggy, on a plate or a treasure chest like I have, because I have all these just weird things, you know. <laughs> and I do know that my froggy is also one of my familiars, too. So if you're familiar with familiars, you know that. <laughs> you cannot hop backwards if you're a frog. Only forwards. It's always forwards, right? So you place the money frog, Mr. Froggy, in on a plate or in your treasure chest. Sprinkle with money drying powder and magnetic sand. Okay. And you're supposed to put it on top of a bed of real coins. And of course, I have a whole bunch of different real coins, like the $1 gold coins, $2 coins. Like, I don't, I don't know where I get all this stuff. It just, you know, kids. <laughs> and um, yes, the money drying powder, we're going to use. Um, one of my chamomile tea bags. We're going to just break it open. I do love tea for all kinds of reasons, especially spiritual baths. It's wonderful. You don't have to go out and buy any dried, nothing. You just go and buy some tea bags, right? And then 
yeah, I just leave them in the tea bag so you don't have to have all the crap floating around your bathtub and then you have to clean it out. No, you just take the tea bag out. Works just the same, believe me. I'm all protected. So we're going to dump the chamomile tea in here. And normally I would have magnetic sand, but I think my son took it to his father's. So we're going to use... Magnetic beads. Yes, <laughs> I know. I have the craziest stuff, I know. So we're going to mix it around, and then we're going to just put little froggy up on top of it. Yes. So you can sprinkle with more powder periodically as well. And you can place it under your bed, looking at the door, or on your altar. Yes, I do have a altar up here. With my crystals so for my familiars and my beautiful crystals and anything else that is very important to well you know all my tools and such so the other thing I would say besides and definitely put your intentions with froggy right every day grateful for the abundance you have and state that you receive wealth and income from known and unknown sources. I am a money magnet, right? I am a money magnet. Mm -hmm. Every day say that. And you can also, you know, kind of, well, I'll just show you if you guys haven't seen my jade tree, coins, luck, prosperity, and such. Although, I just love my jades. I have a few of them. Yeah. So, there is your information for today on magic and manifestation. Yes. I did want to quickly go over last night's... I, I have to. I have to go over last night's Oscars just because they were so... I really got into some of the messages because, you know, we speak of, well, I speak of these things all the time. So I was just very delighted to know that other people have the same views, especially now mm -hmm. with Chiron mm -hmm. and Uranus moving, all these planets shifting that are integral to change, right? But I did have this figured out a little differently. I'm going to put this book away quickly. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm just going to put it on the conscious queen's desk for now. Yeah. So I did have these switched around, but because I think the last one is the most important to go through. So Lady Gaga. Mm -hmm. I love her, you know, of course I do. Um, she says it's not about winning, right? It's about failing. She said, well, not really failing, but it's failing and falling or falling over and over again and getting back up. So it's not about the end goal either. <laughs> you know, it's about seriously picking yourself back up over and over. And when you do reach that level of success, it actually is almost like a little sad in a way <laughs> because you're never going to have that same moment over again. Then you have to like, Redo all your goals because it's like, it's like you're so happy, but a little part of you, at least in my experience, I, I'm only speaking for myself that because I'm a, you know, planner, goal setter, whatever. Um, it does feel a little like, you know, when I got done typing up the snake that never sheds, it was like, oh, it's here. The day's here. You know, whatever comes after comes after. Um, its success is on its own, right? I'm no longer really responsible. <laughs> so Nike, hmm, call me crazy. Yeah, that was amazing because, I mean, it really did speak to me because throughout my life so many times, so many times, especially the last few years, over and over did I hear 
And not only did I hear, but my kids heard, and then my kids spoke, some of them, saying that I was crazy, right? Um, for following my dreams, passions, goals, desires, and and having a bigger picture than what most people are used to seeing from somebody like, you're crazy. Like, how could you want to leave this lifestyle and, and start all over or whatnot, you know? Um, I heard it a lot, but now I'm kind of like, yeah, call me crazy. <laughs> I love that commercial completely. You, you guys have to watch it if you haven't seen it. It made me cry. And the Green Book movie, um, I'm not sure if this first one is actually from the movie, if it's a quote, but whoever presented, I can't remember her name, she said this quote, so I'm not sure if it's directly from the movie or not, but any journey that opens someone's eyes, oh, I can barely say it. <laughs> any journey that opens someone's eyes and softens their heart is a journey worth taking. especially after the crazy, <laughs> right? No matter what, it's worth it. Even if you have people calling you crazy. If it's a journey that opens someone's eyes and softens their heart, it's a journey worth taking. Even if it's your own. <laughs> it takes courage to change people's hearts, again. That for sure was from the Green Book because I got it off of their commercial. So obviously I'm going to have to see that movie. <laughs> and then, yes, this is the longer one because I did look this something up with this because it just, it did speak to me in a different way um, because I completely agree. However, I don't know if everybody understands Obviously, people understand love versus hate, Spike Lee, right? Um, but sometimes that choice, it seems very difficult. Um, how do you do this when you're faced with adversity from the hands of others, institutions and environments, right? So, of course, you're here on the Goddess of Radical Self-Love channel. So, I say we start with the self. And then we let the love flow out. We can't expect it from others in until we're like a magnet attracting it, right? So we attract other healthy people because now that we're giving ourselves love, we're no longer codependent and the love flows out. We attract a like versus a like. Yes. And others who would not be so loving and kind will automatically be walk and roll away Wednesday released from your life. Yes. So he also said, do the right thing. So doing the right thing, right? Well, what does this mean? So I had to look it up and I actually love Desmond Berghofer's thoughts on it, doing the right thing, ethicalleadership.com, right? I'll put it in our uh, description if you want to read it for yourself. Um, it is a well-known dictum in the executive world that leaders are the people who do the right thing, and managers are the ones who do things right. The expression gets its power from the shades of meaning. The word, the word right, sorry, I'm sorry I'm reading this so weird, has in the English language, I don't understand why this seems like it's weird. The expression, the expression gets its power from the shades of meaning seems like there's something missing there. The word right has in the English language. To do the right thing means to make a choice among possibilities in favor of something the collective wisdom of humanity knows to be the way to act. To do things right carries the meaning of efficiency, effectiveness, expertise, and the like. 
This does not mean leaders are ineffective or lack expertise, nor that managers know nothing about the big picture. It is simply a way of highlighting that a leader must call upon a broad band of intuitive knowledge and use it to give guidance and direction. Two things are critical here. The first is we believe that somehow out of all the myriad of possibilities in the complex world, there is something we can call right action in a given situation. The, sec the second is we believe someone, namely the leader, will be able to find the right thing and choose to do it no matter what. Both of these benefits say much about why human affairs sometimes go so well and why at other times they go very badly. If a person comes to a position of power as a leader in an organization or in society without knowing how to do the right thing, then the people under his or her influence are in for a bad time. At worst, they will find themselves plunged into a brutal conflict without outside, with outside forces, or at best will spend a lot of time and energy struggling with internal disharmony and damage control. That these kinds of mismatches and consequences occur all too frequently in human affairs should suggest to us we are doing something wrong. The simplest answer is that we should select, appoint, and or elect better leaders. This is funny because the last comment Spike Lee said was about, you know, the upcoming election, but it's funny how it tied in, but synchronicity, you know. True, but the problem is we don't know how to do that. And moreover, we tend to inherit many of our leaders, th leaders through rights of birth, ownership, seniority, prestige, wealth, etc. The more thoughtful approach to help helping with our problem of ineffective leadership is to look to the basic assumption from which the problem comes. It is the first of the two benefits mentioned above, that right action in a given situation is knowable. If we believe that, then we should examine the issue of how right action is knowable rather than jumping quickly to the second belief that there is a leader somewhere out there who will know what the right action is and do it for us. It is hanging off the responsibility it is in handing off the responsibility for doing the right thing from ourselves to someone else that we get into trouble. The reason we believe right action is knowable is that our human traditions are a full stories are full of stories which tell us this is so. From Judeo Christian pronouncements of the Ten Commandments and their equivalent in other spiritual tra traditions to the simple stories, telling of good deeds, brave sacrifices, honest dealings of our children's literature, we are brought up knowing there are right ways and wrong ways to act. If we widen the net to include stories from the political, military, and business arenas, then we also know how particular moves were made down through history that resulted in some notable achievements. Sometimes luck was involved, but always somewhere in the story, a prepared mind knew how to do the right thing. And there lies the clue to what is missing from our current effects efforts to promote right action in our society. We are not doing sufficient, sorry, my eye, <clears throat> to prepare enough minds to know what is right action. See, it seems like words are missing out of it. We are not doing sufficient. I don't know. A leader is not able to lead effectively if the people he or she is leading have not themselves learned the lessons of right action. True part of the role of the leader is to bring a teacher, is to be a teacher and model of right action. But if the minds of the people are clouded by preoccupation with self-interest, the leader is more likely to be sacrificed than respected and followed. What this brings us back to is the understanding that the quality and, the, and act of leadership must be distributed throughout society. We are each of us leaders in our own spheres of influence. What kind of leader we will be is determined by the quality of our leadership mind. Foremost amongst the attributes of that mind is the ability to know what is the right thing to do. If enough of us know that and practice it under the mentorship and guidance of those who choose to come forward into larger offices of leadership, then it is likely we will have a successful and just decent society. 
If not, then we do not have much to look forward to. All of this reinforces the point that ethics lie at the core of a successful society or organization and that ethical leadership is one of our greatest continuing needs. It is no coincidence to say a leader is one who does the right thing. We have seen all too frequently in this century the misery and carnage which flow in the wake of unethical leadership. We are seeing today the moral fiber in our own peace-loving society warped and weakened by leaders in high places who do not do the right thing. But sadly, there are two, a large of degree, poor products of our own inadequate efforts to place ethical teachings at the center point of who we are and what we stand for. Self-serving, materialized, materialism, of course, I say that all the time. I don't know what's wrong with me. I can barely see though. It was the wrong cat, sorry. Self-serving materialism has led us to treat each other and our beautiful planet and its wondrous life forms as objects to be exploited rather than as living tissue of our being. In our impassioned pursuit of technology and technique, we have forgotten that life comes first. So there is much to do with reshaping the way we live together with right action at the core. There is important work to be done by an institute for ethical leadership. We must find new ways. Da, 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 da. Well, I'm going to keep reading because this is actually good for everyone. We must find new ways of retelling the old stories of decency, love, cooperation, and support. New heroes who create new myths of stewardship and service must displace the old warrior image and the screen idols who indulge their lives of violence and conquest and adventures on the dark side of humanity. We must let in the light in a hundred thousand ways to show how we can walk together into the future and know at every step we are trying hard to do the right thing. Well, I just think that was perfectly well said. <laughs> Yeah, and it's definitely something that when we're dealing with 10,000 people a day turning 65, we need leadership who understands what's happening and who isn't lying to us or covering it up with like our population turnover. I know exactly what's going on. Mecca knows what's going on. And our seniors and our disabled population and those who care for them, their caregivers, yeah, they need a leader they can trust. I am that leader. Well, for me. <laughs> no, I'm being serious. Like, I understand this entire industry in a way that is ethical. I mean, a lot of people who understand this industry, believe me, they understand this industry and they are ready. They are ready to fill their money bags. That's what they're ready to do. They're gonna keep allowing horrible resources. They're gonna keep not having any quality control. People are gonna keep on being abused, neglected, and dying in assisted living and nursing homes. And there's not gonna be really any standard for home care with them. With me, that's totally different. All I care about is protecting, supporting, valuing, all these things. So. Obviously, I'm the right person for the job. That's my mission, and that's why I was sent here. Yes. So, thank you so much, Spike Lee, for introducing that little tidbit from last night to help us today. And, yes, I will come back in... Actually, I don't think I'm going to have time. Well, I'll do a, a meditation for like five minutes. All right. I love you all. Thank you so much for sticking with me and liking and sharing and commenting, donating. Yeah. We love you so much. Have a beautiful Manifestation Monday. Make your dreams come true by making a plan. But don't be too rigid. Love you all. See you soon. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Yes, this is our Monday Manifestation Meditation. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be reading from 
A Course in Miracles, or what I like to call deprogramming for this meditation. So let's go ahead and clear and expand our chakras. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and stretch out and up. Mm -hmm. Pulling in all the divinity from the divine universe into our crown chakras, third eye chakras, throat chakras, and our heart chakras. Reach around and pull in all Gaia's energy for stability. Mm -hmm. Root chakras, sacral chakras, <laughs> solar plexus, and our heart chakras, where they meet as one. Go ahead and reach out and up and around. And feel that energy and pull it down into your crown chakra, third eye chakra, throat chakra, and your heart chakra. Reach out and around and pull Gaia's energy into your root chakra, sacral chakra, solar plexus, and your heart chakra where they meet as one. And for manifestation, we do an odd number. So let's once again reach out and around, up into the universe, pull it down into your crown chakra, third eye chakra, throat chakra, and your heart chakra. Reach out and around, pull all the energy from Gaia, into your root chakra, sacral chakra, solar plexus, and your heart chakra, where they meet as one. I am not the victim of the world I see. I am not the victim of the world I see. I am not the victim of the world I see. Today's idea is the introduction to your declaration of release Again, the idea should be applied to both the world you see without and the world you see within. In applying the idea, we will use a form of practice which will be used more and more with changes as indicated. Generally speaking, the form includes two aspects, one in which you apply the idea on a more sustained basis and the other consisting of frequent applications of the idea throughout the day. Two longer periods of practice with the idea for today are needed, one in the morning and one at night. Three to five minutes for each of these are recommended. During that time, look about you slowly while repeating the idea two to three times. Then close your eyes and apply the same idea to your inner world. You will escape both from both together for the inner is the cause of the outer. As you survey your inner world, merely let whatever thoughts cross your mind come into your awareness, each to be considered for a moment and then replaced by the next. Try not to escape any kind of hierarchy among them. Watch them come and go as dispassionately as possible. Do not dwell on any idea in particular, but try to let the stream move on evenly and calmly without any special investment on your part. As you sit and quietly watch your thoughts, repeat today's idea to yourself as often as you care to, but with no sense of hurry. In addition, repeat the idea for today as often as possible during the day. Remind yourself that you are making a declaration of independence in the name of your own freedom. And in your freedom lies the freedom of the world. The idea for today is also a particularly useful one to use as a response to any form of temptation that may arise. It is a declaration that you will not yield to and put yourself in bondage. 
I am not the victim of the world I see. I am not the victim of the world I see. I am not the victim of the world I see.
Love you out.